Kasalukuyan nagsasagawa ng press briefing ang Department of Budget and Management. Parurin po natin. And the projection is that uh, it will continue to be the case. Uh, number two has to do with the uh, ongoing uh, fiscal and debt uh, consolidation uh, of government. If you look at our interest payments, they are falling you know, as a percentage of the budget. And if you look at the uh, deficit numbers, we have continued to stay well within the cap of uh, uh, deficit to GDP. And then the, I think the final factor has to do with uh, political stability and uh, governance. So I think uh, Moody's has factored in what is happening in the country right now. And I think uh, they have looked at this as something positive in terms of uh, further improving the prospects for good governance because this collective outrage uh, against uh, the PIDAF and the response of both uh, the president and the uh, government, for example, in uh, abolishing the PIDAF in the budget and the filing of cases, uh, at least the first batch of cases, indicates that the government is responding to uh, what the people want. And that can only lead to uh, the inducement of greater transparency and uh, accountability in the budget. But even more important, because of the very active role that's being uh, uh, exercised by the people, I think there is going to be a greater sense of ownership, you know, which can translate into more rallies, more demands, more social media uh, interaction. Uh, people are, you know, saying that uh, we have to change uh, the culture of politics in this country. And if that goes on and on, it can only mean uh, sustained and eventually irreversible changes uh, in our country's uh, politics, but also in our, the way we uh, manage uh, public funds in this country. So, and I agree with them that uh, that is something uh, positive because ang, ano naman, if, you look, if you study the uh, economic performance of the country, which has been unprecedented, it's really founded on good governance. Eh? And, and I think when people see that uh, not just small fish, but uh, you know, high officials are being uh, charged in court. You know, starting with uh, the former president, the uh, the conviction and uh, of the chief justice, the uh, impeachment and forced resignation of the of the uh, ombudsman, the uh, uh, filing of charges, and the arrest of uh, military and police generals, and now the filing of cases against. Uh, uh, legislators, I think to the small people what, what that translates to is that hindi lang yung mga maliliit ang tatamaan dyan. Mr. Patuloy na nakikinig yung presidente, sabi mo, ang ibig sabihin ng presidente, ang ibig sabihin ng presidente, yes, I think then if, if that, you know, if the president remains uh, attuned with and engage with the people, which I, for me is very good, then uh, we, we, will be con we will be seeing uh, continuing reforms in, in governance. Of course, you know, people have a tendency to have very high expectations and uh, something that sometimes you cannot uh, avoid. And, you know, when you do not meet those expect expectations, there's a tendency also for some level of... Uh, Frustration to say, lalo na kung babagal, you know, ang proseso. But there are other things that are beyond the control of the president. For example, the pace by which the judiciary is going to uh, try these uh, cases. In fact, there was a bit of a debate about how long, for example, the ombudsman, uh, before it, it is able to say that there is a 
prima facie or, or a basis for filing uh, these cases against this uh, official. Yung sinasabing probable cause. Because that will be the next to the filing of the cases. That will be the next stage of the cases is the determination of whether in fact there is a probable cause to charge uh, certain people either with uh, plunder or with the uh, malversation of public funds. Well, okay. Yung, yung, the present questions are directed at the past, eh, 2011 and 2012. So the question really that is more relevant is, what about 2013? Well, it's almost like, uh, you know, the events have overtaken us. Eh, because number one, na TRO ng Supreme Court yung, yung PIDAF. Eh. So, at the rate they're going, I don't know kung matatapos ito by December. See, we have a policy now in the in the department that uh, appropriations that uh, remain unobligated at the end of the year uh, will 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 no longer be available for utilization next year. So. They will, they will end by the end of December 31. And the effect there, and we're talking about 14 billion pesos, is that uh, we will not be able to use them for uh, the PIDAF uh, requirements of the legislators. And ang mangyayari doon, bababa yung ating deficit by 14 billion pesos. Similarly, itong uh, itong uh, uh, Disbursement uh, Acceleration Program. Actually, it's now a misnomer. Eh? Kasi we have, already, we have already affected the acceleration of spending. So halos hindi na kailangan ngayon taon yan. Eh? In fact, w- w- what the President just needs to do is exercise the power that's given to him under Article 5 uh, of the Constitution, which is really the power of the President to declare savings and realign that for certain priorities of government. A, a good example is uh, what happened in uh, in Davao Oriental and uh, Compostela Valley. Nagkaroon ng bagyo, the total cost of the relief and rehabilitation requirements from government, not from the private sector, but from government alone, is about 11 billion pesos. Ngayon, ang calamity fund natin is, uh, is, is 11, 7.5 billion this year, but it has already been used up in some other places. So it will not be enough to fund the cost of uh, relief and rehab in that place. And then recently, tinamaan naman tayo nitong uh, Sambuanga City crisis, uh, for which the president said, an initial estimate based on DSWD figures of 3.89 billion is going to be required for, again, relief and rehabilitation. There's still about 80,000 families living in the in the gymnasium in uh, Sambuanga City. So the question is, these are not in the budget, and there is not enough calamity fund. So where are you going to get the money to spend for the rehabilitation of Compostela Valley and the Bau Oriental? and the relief and rehabilitation of Bangla City. So the president may now need to exercise his power to declare savings and realign funds so that we can give priority to this more urgent uh, concern. So yun ang, yun ang niya. Then we have other commitments. For example, we are committed to finally paying off what we owe the central bank by way of uh, capital infusion, which in 1996, if I'm not mistaken, that was a commitment that was never actually complied with by the national government. It was only during this administration that we will be able to pay the 40 billion that we owe the Banco Central. And so in this last quarter, we hope to be able to generate 10 billion more from uh, possible savings so that we can fulfill our obligation to the central bank. Kaya kung pagsasamahin mo yung 11, 
plus 3.9. That's about uh, almost uh, 15 plus 10, 25. So we have to look for funds that, in fact, uh, or, or, or declared savings so that we can realign them to these uh, requirements. So ganun na lang mangyari. And uh, uh, I don't think that there will be room to entertain uh, requests from legislators this time, especially since uh, even the PIDAC itself, to which they were entitled under the 2013 uh, GAA, is, uh, I don't know what is the fate of that because it's now in the Supreme Court. Sir, will the remaining PIDAC go back to the general fund or will that be considered a savings? What's going to happen to the remaining? It's about 14 billion, by yeah. the way. Well, if, if it is not utilized, then that just means, because we are in deficit. Eh? We are in deficit. So, ibig sabihin, instead of borrowing more money, we will be borrowing less. Which means uh, that will be uh, savings to us by way of interest payments next year. At yung ating deficit, deficit cap may even be lower than 2%, which is good for us because, sabi ng Bloomberg, you have been religiously complying with your commitment to stay within 2% of GDP in terms of your deficit. Sir, so nandun pa rin siya sa pera for this year, yung 14 billion, except na makiiba na yung use niya? Well, it may not even be used at all. Mm-hmm. Kasi hindi siya mao-obligate. So ano mga iyari? Hindi na siya magagamit. We do not have to spend 14 billion. But that is assuming that the Supreme Court will stick to the TRO up to the end of the year. Uh, we made, a, I think, on behalf of the uh, House of Representatives, the Office of the Solicitor General, made, an, made them a special motion to the Supreme Court saying, if the TRO can just be relaxed for two items, scholarships and hospitalization, but uh, the Supreme Court stuck to its... Uh, original decision. So, At yan po ang uh, press briefing ni Budget and Management Secretary uh, Butch Abad. Sabi ni Abad, makatutulong ang mga kasalukuyang isyu tungkol sa paggamit ng budget ng gobyerno para mas maging aktibo ang publiko sa pagsilip sa aktibidad ng pamahalaan. Iginit ni Abad na may kapangyarihan ng Pangulo na tukuyin ang paglalaanan ng savings ng pamahalaan. Muli rin iginiit ni Abad na constitutional ang uh, Disbursement Acceleration Program para mapabilis daw ang paglabas ng pondo sa mga proyektong kailangan ng gawin. Pero sinabi ni Abad na mukhang pwede nang buwagin ang DAP. At para naman sa mga mambabata sa ngayon daw, baka hindi muna sila papayagang humingi ng dagdag pondo.